Hi there, I'm Brian Keller, and I'm joined today by my good friend and colleague, Greg Bohr. Greg, you are a program manager on the Team Foundation server team, right? That's right. I work on the Team Foundation server team, and most recently I've been working on the Agile tooling for Team Foundation server. Fantastic. And so I understand that uh, here today you're, you're here to show us for the first time a new Kanban, Kanban? What? Kan Kanban for TFS, I, right? I've heard it said either way. Okay. Um, yes, it's, it's their new feature, Kanban. Uh, um, it's a way of visualizing your workflow flow as it flows through your through your process. Okay, so I'll, I'll confess I've heard of Kanban as kind of this movement over the last several years, but I'm, I'm really a neophyte. I don't quite understand how that differs from the way you might manage work in, in a scrum team, or maybe it doesn't differ. Can you give us kind of a, a brief background on what, what Kanban is and why sure. I should care? Yes, I have a few slides to kind of go through some of the, uh, the main principles of Kanban. Should I do that now? Yeah, let's do it. All right. So um, the first principle of Kanban is that you want to visualize your flow. Um, rather than having a list of user stories and what state they're in, what you really want to do is you want to visualize the flow of work or value being mm. delivered to your customer as it starts in the backlog and moves into dev and test and then on to the customer. So that's one. Um, the second one with Kanban is limiting your work in progress. Uh, Kanban is very much focused on trying to limit that you don't have lots of items that are in progress and not being completed. They want you to be picking up items, completing them, and moving on to the next one. And the, and, and the, really believe that that's how you increase your efficiency, is limiting that. I can imagine, because we all know that context switching between lots of active tasks, that, 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 that has a high tax associated with it. So I can see why limiting yourself to one or two things at a time uh, can be a value. I so agree. So how does Kanban help me do that? Well, it, it, uh, what it does is it not only, it understands that it's not only at the individual, the whole context switching, mm -hmm. but it actually has a cost for the entire enterprise, the entire organization developing the stream. So limiting your work and flow gives you a steady stream of work moving through, and you should be able to visualize that on your Kanban. Board. Okay. And then the last thing is about managing flow. And uh, so, like, if, for example, you could have several developers, and they're cranking out code, and they're really pushing it out, and they're doing great, but if your testers can't keep up, for mm -hmm. example, um, your flow is restricted. Sure. You really aren't delivering anything to the customer at a, at a fast rate. And what Kanban is really about is optimizing for flow through the entire system so that you get this steady flow of work through to your customer. That makes a lot of sense. Yep. So those are the three principles. That's In a nutshell, that's what Kanban is. Okay. So we mentioned, we mentioned Scrum. I, I imagine this doesn't even have to be mutually exclusive. You can, you can practice Scrum while still also visualizing the flow Absolutely. of work in Kanban. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. And you probably don't even have to practice Scrum to take advantage of this if you have a more formal Process. That's correct. That's the okay. thing about Kanban is you can you can visualize a waterfall process or a Scrum process or or a process where you're not even using sprints and you're just continuously delivering functionality through your system. Okay, great. So we've seen some screenshots. I'd love to see a demo in action. You bet. So let me get that uh, up and running here. So right here, I can show you. This is the backlog that we're all used to. It's a nice list of items, and you can drag up and down. Uh, what we've added is this board tab here on the product backlog where you can now visualize not only your backlog items right here, but the flow of those, uh, those user stories or backlog items as they're going through your system. Okay. So right here, for example, it's interactive. I can grab a user story and say, hey, it's now been resolved and I've closed it, and I can drag it into the closed column. And then now I can pull new items off of that into my resolve column and pull items off my backlog into the active column where the developers are working on it. Okay. So you can see items just being flowing across. Um, this column right here shows you the top 20 items on your backlog. Okay. So you always have the most important stuff. This column right here shows you the most recently closed 20 items that you've just completed. So you could always go back and look at them if you wanted. Okay. The, this uh, a key artifact in Kanban is this cumulative flow diagram right here. And it really what it is, if I were to describe this a little bit, this gray area is stuff on your backlog. The green area is stuff you've completed, and the blue area are in various stages of being in progress. And you can see at a point in time how many user stories you had in every state. That's great. The visualization then shows you that, like at the beginning of my project, I had lots of stuff in progress and I wasn't really completing things very good, right? But then I got a little bit better at maintaining my flow so items were flowing steadily off the backlog and into complete on a steady rate like this. 
So I can imagine you can quickly look at this and tell, you know, if everything's kind of the same width, mm -hmm. then you're doing well from a Kanban right. continuous value delivery perspective. That's right. You're managing your flow very well. But if you see a lot of blue area and not so much green, then you say, hey, I have too much stuff in progress. I need to start working on that. So. That's great. So, so what, what, do I, what kind of indicator do I get if I have too much work in progress now? You, uh, today? Mm -hmm. Well, what we do is we have um, the ability for you to manage your work in progress in this way. You'll notice up here that we have these little numbers and the, that says I have three user stories and my work in progress limit mm -hmm. is three. So you can imagine right here if I dragged another story into the resolve state, now the resolved is red. It says I've exceeded my work in progress. So um, what Kanban thinking is, it says you define what a work in progress is, the, about, the amount of uh, work that your test team can process at a steady rate. And that's your whip limit. And what it would say is you would not pull this item into the column until you've actually said, I've completed one, mm -hmm. now I have a little room, and I can pull an item from here into that column as well. And then you start to manage your flow by just controlling the amount of progress that's in work that's in progress at a time. That, that's great. So, so this actually looks a lot like the task board that I'm used to from mm -hmm. TFS Preview and TFS 2012. But I think the difference here is that at this point, you're, you're, you're operating at the requirement or that's the right. product backlog item level. Whereas if, if we maybe if you want to open up the task board, sure. we can contrast that and show how there you're operating at the kind of the granular, like what a developer is actually doing. Is that yeah, right? Yeah, let's do, let's do that. So let me go here. I've, I've shown you a project that didn't have any sprints defined or iterations. So let's go ahead and just, for the exact same project, let's just turn on iterations. So what we're saying right now is um, this is this would be a typical project that is using Scrum. Mm -hmm. They pull things into sprints. They can they pull user stories into sprints. They break the sprints down into tasks. They use the tasks to do capacity planning. That's all very valid, and a lot of customers are very very successful. We are very successful in doing that. Um, then when you go to the task board for a particular sprint, what you see are the the user stories as they're being worked on, and you can see hey I'm I can drag the user stories to complete the task board is really about watching the flow of work as it's being completed. The Kanban board is watching the flow of value being delivered to your customer. Because a customer fundamentally doesn't care if you implemented a web service if no. that doesn't actually add value that's to right. what they can use. Okay, that's, that's great. Right. That's great. Yeah, but the team still gets their tools that they want to use it, and you can still always go back to the Kanban board and you can see how you're doing here. And you'll see for the sprint velocity chart, for example, mm -hmm. um, you show that in the current sprint, I have so many items completed. It's all integrated. So if I just start dragging items over here like this, you can see that more items are being completed. So I can use Scrum and Kanban. They're, they're both work wonderfully together. That's, that's fantastic. Thank you for the demo. And we should mention that you're showing this off of tfspreview.com, which that's is our, our hosted version of Team Foundation Server. Mm -hmm. And as of today, this is available for anyone that has a TFS Preview account. If you don't have a TFS Preview account, just go to TFS Preview. It's free to sign up during right. the, the, the preview. And of course, we, we haven't announced final pricing, but we have announced that there will be a free version of this when we do officially ship. And there'll be paid versions as well. Now, what about if I'm running Team Foundation Server on-premise Within That's right. my organization. Yeah, certainly. So we're planning a fall release uh, where we will be taking all this uh, great functionality that you're seeing on the preview, and we packaged up into an update for our on, our 2012 uh, product that we're shipping soon here, mm -hmm. and um, and it will be available for our on-premise customers as well. So look at the TFS preview, and it's just a sign of the goodness to come to your on-premise installation. And, and and that's right, because you guys aren't done. You're, mm -hmm. you're continuing to take feedback, and so by the time this shows up and on-premises, there may even be additional features oh, that for sure. we there can There will be, off. yes. That's great. Continuous value yes. for helping you deliver that's continuous right. Watching value. Watching it flow to the customer. Absolutely. Yep. Well, Greg, thanks so much for being here. Okay, And uh, keep up the great work. Thank you very much. Thank you.